The ash, the hoe we tapping and pass it like magic. No, we not asking, we see it, we grabbing. Diamonds, they flashing, go blind when I'm passing. Mask on, I'm clapping, no mask on assassin. Jugging, we snatching, all black is the fashion. We not the same, bro, just look at the fabric. Hey, what's good, everybody? It's your boy Kama. We back with another video, man. Hey, man, real quick, man. Um, a couple of things I want to discuss real quick, man. Um, um, you know, I'm not really a fan, I don't really watch a lot of mainstream media. I like. I catch um, clips, like a lot of people, like you might be scrolling on YouTube, might just see like a five minute clip from this show or 10 minute clip from the show. Or I might see somebody post something, somebody say it on Twitter, um, Instagram, yada, yada, yada. But um, I want to talk about um, this clip I seen from, um, what's the name of the show with Joy Teller? Um, Speak, right? They were saying that the Eagles separate themselves from the rest of the NFC and did anybody catch up and, you know, yada, yada, yada. I mean, rightfully so. I never hate on nobody. They the NFC champs. You know what I'm saying? They the NFC champs. They deserve to be the NFC champs. It is what it is. I'm not here to uh, hate or anything like that. Um, So they go on to say that the Cowboys and 49ers, um, Acho even mentioned the Seattle um, they basically poo pooed on everything everybody said and how it was such a large gap and things of that nature. In my opinion, I can't see how it's a large gap. Um, you went one on one with the Cowboys last year. When you got a chance to play San Fran, who was on like a 10 game win streak when you played them, you played a practice squad, squad quarterback because their quarterback got hurt. Um, you were supposed to win that game. I don't see how that's separate yourself from the pack when you clearly look at. You clearly look at all three teams' rosters. Like, everybody's roster pretty much adds up. And um, they said something about did the Eagles get better and things of that nature. Um, I don't think so. Um, I don't see how you equate a team losing seven to eight starters from the previous season going to Super Bowl and replacing them basically with journeymen and journeymen and rookies and think that they're going to be immediately better um Acho hit on it said he don't think they got better but he don't he don't think they got better but he don't feel like they got worse neither i feel like it was like the pr answer because there's no when you lose a hargraves or who was got 20 million dollars per year annually for a reason when you lose a cj garner johnson who left and got eight million from What's um, the Lions? When you lose these caliber players and you lose your offensive guard, you lose the guy who ran for over 1,300 yards and you lose your offensive guard. Uh, I can't pronounce his name. You lost all your linebackers. You lost all your safeties. I don't see how we look at that as we're going to come back and be just a well oiled machine. It's just, and this ain't got nothing to do with the Eagles. Like, it's just reality. Sometimes we lose value on what other people mean. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm a Cowboys fan, so I speak for experience. Like, ever since, as a Cowboys fan, ever since we lost um, Ron Larry at left guard, we've been basically rotating left guards for the past five, six, maybe seven years. Ever since we lost Ron Larry. That's how small, that's how small you might think something's been missing. But how big it is in reality, like how he fits the scheme. So I don't sneeze at you losing your right guard or whatever the case may be. I don't take that like likely, like, oh, plug and play, we're gonna keep going. I know they got an exceptional offensive line coach out there. So like they're confident, rightfully so, they should be confident. But Miles Sanders running for thirteen hundred had a career season. These things is not just easy to replace. And you replace them with Swift. DeAndre Swift, whose career high is 600 yards on the ground. I mean, I get he could catch the ball out the backfield and all that, but the position is called running back. Rashard Penny's always hurt. Kenny Gangwell and these guys are unproven. They haven't done it for a whole season. They've only been playing spot duty. I just don't think it's going to be as easy as you think. Like, then you think, then you get somebody like Joey Teller who says, I don't want to talk about the Cowboys. The Cowboys had a Super Bowl like roster last year didn't do anything. So you saying the Cowboys on one hand they had a Super Bowl caliber roster, 
on the, then on the other hand, you saying, everybody acknowledging we got better, but no gap was closed between the Cowboys and the Eagles. I don't know. These are things they say. It make it make sense to me, man. I don't I don't get it like that. And this is just not the Eagles thing. Any team and then we didn't even calculate we didn't even calculate the fact that they lost them seven, eight stars and the Dominican Sue and Lil Bo Joseph who helped them tremendously down the stretch of the season. You're not replacing that with just rookies, Jalen Carden and Jordan. Like they they're not just replacing that with no rookie Jordan Hargrave day one. You're hoping what Reed Blakership can be. You're hoping that Edmonds, Edmonds who came from the terrible secondary in Pittsburgh, who y'all torched last year too. Like, we're hoping these guys can pan out. Morrow is pretty solid. But Morrow's the, um, to me, Morrow's the guy that if you get, your starter goes down, I don't got no problem with him sliding and starting seven games, holding it down five, six games. But, Doing it the whole season, we were it's a remain to be seen, but like, like I said, there ain't no shade, man. I just think when you're the media's favorite, when you're the media's favorite, it's like you could do no wrong. Like, um, it's funny how when we work these quarterbacks at NFC, Jalen Hurts is head and shoulders above everybody because he made the Super Bowl, but you got people who had like Matthew Stafford who just won the Super Bowl a year before with all these injuries and all the stuff he was dealing with. You got the guy, Jerry Goff, who's been to the Super Bowl. You got, like, it's all types of everything. Like, so if just making the Super Bowl was the criteria, why is he just, why is he number one? I'm getting you, you got to make it make sense, man. Sometimes when you watch these X's and O's, when you watch these X's and O's, it's, it's different. Like, I just think it's different, man. Like, when you watch these X's and O's, some quarterbacks, just operate at the higher level at the line of scrimmage. No shade to anybody, man. Like, watch the footage. I mean, um, shout out to Koye Media. He put out multiple film sessions on Dak or Jalen Hurts, a bunch of quarterbacks. I like, watch it. Some quarterbacks just actually do more. There's no shade to Jalen Hurts and none of that shit. But, like, I just can't see you being pushed to number one off of a season where you had a loaded offense thrown for 22 touchdowns six interceptions it's like like those is not god altering numbers like Patrick Mahomes his first year came out through 50 piece like that's I don't know it's just not on the same plan field as me but y'all let me know what y'all think man always remember like and subscribe it's your boy comment salute we out of here